So the second thing that the author recommends is, quote, since many of us here have been raised in the structure, we have adopted the language, the codes, and the gestures of the structure, and we perpetuate that language, those gestures, those codes, without thinking about it, end quote. This is from page six. A little bit further down, quote, while we're talking about codes, look at your school's website recruiting materials, language, descriptions, advertising. What are the messages encoded in them? Who are they important to? Why? And do we have enough courage to talk about that? To be honest and transparent about what those messages might mean, end quote. So there have been multiple guests who have been on this particular podcast and then multiple unpacking scholarship episodes where I kind of talk about how representation is important for different reasons. So if you want to learn more about that, check out some of the episodes on representation at um, the CSK8 podcast. Now, the third thing that the author recommends is very specific to the schools of music or music programs. So the author recommends just sitting in your department and closing your eyes and just listening to the kinds of sounds that you hear. Now, the author recommends not only listening to the different types of sounds, but also listening at different times of day and to figure out who is welcome and who is not welcome within this particular program. So for context, in schools of music, for example, you might hear jazz, you might hear classical, like the Western European classical music, but if you don't hear EDM or you don't hear rap or mariachi or throat singing or whatever, this should give you an idea of who is welcome and who is not welcome in the schools. You can do a similar thing in computer science programs. You can go into classrooms and you can listen to the things that people are saying, or you can use your eyes, open your eyes, and look at not only who is in the classroom, but the ways that they are engaging with computer science concepts, skills, practices, etc., in the classrooms that are offering computer science or integrating computer science into them. What will this tell you? Well, it might tell you about who is welcome, who is not welcome. It might also tell you what kinds of ways that people are able to engage with computer science. And that might, again, tell you who might be interested or not interested in those types of engagement. So again, like my classroom was multiple programming languages going on simultaneously. So if you walked into it, you'd see one student working on JavaScript and coding some art and animation. The next student might be working on Scratch, like a game. The next student might be working on Sonic Pi, coding some live music. And then the next student might be doing Swift, whether Swift Playgrounds or might be coding like an app for their iPhone or an iPad or something like that. So there's all these different ways of engagement going on in the classroom. Now, if you were to just listen, you would hear people talking about things that they're interested in rather than just like recreating the same thing. So they'd be like talking about sports and how they're going to integrate that idea or that concept into their project or whatever. So there's a lot of like things that people were able to do in the classrooms that I work with. That was by design, that was intentional. If you wanna learn more about how I designed and facilitated those kinds of classes, then check out the episode title, Applications of Affinity Space Characteristics in Computer Science Education. And if you wanna hear the rest of this particular podcast episode, make sure you check out the CSK8 podcast by searching for it on any major platform or simply going to jaredoleary.com slash CSK8. At the moment, there are over 160 episodes with some interviews with some awesome people and some solo episodes like this where I unpack scholarship in relation to computer science education. 